Well, businesses around the world cite the lack of availability of a skilled workforce as the biggest constraint to business growth. That's according to Grant Thornton's 2009 International Business Report. African business is no exception, of course. A number of initiatives, including the Careers in African Recruitment Summit, which concluded in Johannesburg today, aims to address the issue as well as to give the employer an opportunity to find the right candidate. To tell us more from a recruitment perspective is Beatrice Pastura, a business development manager from Global Career Company. Beatrice, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Now, firstly, you received 10,000 applications from candidates, African candidates globally. So definitely there's interest from Africans living in the diaspora to come back home. Yes, there is a lot of interest. Um, they can be for many reasons, obviously personal reasons. They want to, after a few years, go back home closer to their family. Mm -hmm. But I think mainly also um, a lot of interest because they see um, the, the, the percentage of growth uh, in Africa uh, now as opposed to what is happening in Europe and in America. And they want to be a part of that growth and they want to participate um, uh, actively uh, and bring their skills to the table. How can then African businesses better position themselves in order to draw the right candidates? Um, I think... Um, I'm sure it's not only a salary issue. No, it's not a salary issue. Um, it's, it's a question of offering career opportunities. Sometimes, you know, a, a person that has spent five years, ten years in Europe will reach mm. a, pla a plateau and uh, they feel that if they go back to their home country they might have opportunities to, to grow a lot faster within an organization in terms of management opportunities. Mm. But this was also, a, this summit also a gave companies, for instance companies from the oil and gas, engineering, ICT, FMCG sectors yeah. to come and meet candidates directly. What was the reaction from companies themselves in the kinds of candidates which you provided at the, the summit? The companies are generally very impressed to find the level of quality um, in, in those candidates because they all come with an international background, they've lived abroad far from their home country, they usually have a very high uh, level of education with a great degrees and the companies are very happily surprised that they find these this, this types of talents during our summits. Mm. Now these are companies obviously represented across the, the African continent. Now there's, there's the language barriers, there's the cultural barriers, how do you overcome that? in we, sourcing the right candidates? We try to target specific candidates for each specific summit. We have eight summits happening this year throughout the world and some of them are pan-African like the one in Johannesburg last weekend it was for all kind of, you know, they could be French speakers, Portuguese speakers, we had a lot of Angolans, um, or English speakers. And we have, uh, uh, you know, apart from these Pan-African events that target every um, language skills, we have specific ones, like one in Rio um, in September, which will target Angolans and Mozambicans living in Brazil, or one in Brussels um, that happens every year around March, April, that is targeting any African French speakers looking to return to West or North Africa. What type of skills are we finding uh, there's a huge shortage of and which industries or sectors rather would you say are the hardest hit? I think there is a lot of um, uh, demand for the financial sector obviously. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of banks in Africa are still growing as opposed to what we see happening in Europe and America. Um, but also the telecom sector is obviously booming in Africa. So a lot of um, telecom engineers are needed. Mm -hmm. um, and finally I think, about, well two big ones actually are uh, the infrastructure industry um, and also um, the oil and gas industry where a lot of, you know, the, the jobs are need to be highly skilled. Um, so the companies struggle to find these types of skills and finding Africans with those skills plus international experience for them is a great thing. I know we said it's not all about salaries but are we, f are we finding that African companies are offering competitive packages? Yes, they are. Um, they are obviously not offering expat packages because mm. these people are nationals that are going to return to their, home, their own country. Mm. So it wouldn't make sense to offer them an expat package on, on these, these companies' point of view. Mm. But they recognize that these candidates bring a lot to the table. They, they have a, a huge value add. So they offer competitive salaries if you compare it to other, other local candidates without international experience. Uh, however, some skeptics, Beatrice, would argue that we're not seeing uh, 
Africans coming back in droves, uh, what would you say are the main hindrances or, or challenges for them in coming back home? I think there's some of them um, are not quite sure where to start really mm. because when you have been living abroad for four or five years and you start thinking of going back it's difficult to know where to start and you know which companies are recruiting growing etc etc um, ourselves as professionals for recruiting for Africa we're actually able to make the link between the needs of these companies who actually are not aware where the African from the diaspora are and, and these candidates who are really eager and keen to go back home. Well, hopefully we'll see more and more of our brothers and sisters coming back home. I Thank you very so. much, Thank Beatrice. you very much. After the break, we find out how the Kenyan and Mauritian markets performed today. Stay tuned to Regional Roundup.